Okay, welcome back grade sevens to lesson number three of our surface area and volume series. With this lesson, we're going to be dealing with surface area of, this says right prisms, but I'm going to give you any 3D prism and you are still going to be able to solve it. Now, the nice thing I'm going to tell you is that this lesson is different than the first one because during the first lesson, we dealt with rectangular prisms and I had a very specific formula for you. For this one, it's not, it's not like that. All you have to do is just remember the formulas that you would use for all the faces and you add and you figure out the area and you add them all up. And that's what you would have done last year in grade six and that's what you're going to do this year in grade seven. I'm just going to tweak a few things so it's a little bit more presentable and keeps in line with what we've been practicing in our algebra units. So this is an example of a triangular prism that we're going to be using and we're going to be solving the surface area of this triangular prism together. Now, some people, you might need to take this 3D figure and draw it as an open net. If you need to do that, then please, by all means, and do that. Other people, if you're able to leave your figure like this and see the individual faces, go ahead. I've had people put different letters for each of the faces to show which side corresponds with which each solution. Again, it works up to you. All that you have to do is just make sure that you're not forgetting any face because you don't want to be in this scenario where you forget to do an area of one of these faces and there goes your whole question. So what I'm going to tell you over and over again is that when you do the solutions for each of the faces, line one, always has to be the formula. Don't start with straight up the numbers right off the bat. That's not what I want to see. I want to see the formula has to be line one. So I'm going to start with the triangles right off the bat. So area equals base times height, divide that by two. Now, before I get into the actual solution of the triangles, one popular question that I get, especially when it comes down to if this was a triangular prism or a trapezoidal prism or an octagonal prism, whatever, is basically they may say, well, why do I have to multiply this by two? In this case, I'm going to tell you it's part of the formula. I want you to do it. You don't want to be in a scenario where you're dropping the two uh, for this solution and somewhere later on you're going to forget to divide by two when you get to any sort of triangle so please for argument's sake leave it there I know we're going to be multiplying two towards the end but that's a really important step because it shows that you understand that there's two faces that are triangles on this triangular prism so we're going to go through and I see my dimensions here are four times three Divide that by 2. 4 times 3 is 12. Divide that by 2. I have 6. And I just finished telling you that we have two faces here. So I have 12 squared centimeters. And I'm going to circle my solution right here. So that here is my work. I'm going in a vertical fashion. And I've circled my final answer. That way I know where to find it. And I know where to draw. If somebody else was looking at my work they would know that that is where my solution is for that part. Now I'm going to do the front part of this triangular prism, that large part that's sort of sloping downwards. And I can see that it's in the shape of a rectangle. And I know my formula for area of a rectangle. So base times height, or some people might say length times width, whatever works for you. Just make sure that you have the formula there. Now I can see my dimensions are 7 by 5, so I'm going to put 7 by 5. My answer is 35 square centimeters. Again, I've done that and I've circled it. So here we go, 35 squared centimeters. Now I'm going to do the back part of this triangle or prism if you can picture it. I have the three here, but my other dimension I, I need is this part here. You can see where it's sort of dotted. I'm just going to put a little line here. And that dimension I see is right here. It's going to be seven. So those are the two numbers that I need for that rectangular prism. So again, base times height. My base is going to be seven. My height is going to be three. My answer is 21 squared centimeters. So circle that. So now I have all these different parts. I'm left with one last component, which is going to be my base. So again, base times height. And I can see immediately what my dimensions are of the rectangle shape on the bottom, which is going to be a four times my seven. 
which is going to be 28 square centimeters. Now, before I add all the different parts up, I'm going to take a quick check to make sure I have all my different faces. So I have my triangles at a three times four. I have my front dimension, which is seven by five. My back, which is a three times seven, I have that. And my base, which is a four by seven here. So I have all my different parts. And here is where it's useful because I have all those different parts circled. And all I have to do is bring them forward and I do need to show my work, right? So I'm going to put this at the bottom here. You'll see I'm down here at the bottom. 12 plus my 35 plus my 21 plus 28, right? And then this is a matter of just simply adding those up. Okay, and that will be 96 square centimeters. And I'm going to circle that. And I know some people, they like to put that therefore sign that shows that you're dealing with the final solution and that's where it is. So again, I have it circled. And my final answer for the surface area of this triangular prism is 96 squared centimeters. And all my work is up here and I've gone down. And in each case, line number one is the formula. Very, very important. Don't forget that one. Again, don't drop it and start with the numbers right away. Now, this is just our, uh, our textbook lays it out in a horizontal fashion. I'm going to encourage you, don't do that. Because in all my years of teaching, all the teachers we like to have in a solved down because that's what you would be doing during algebra anyways. Now I'm going to skip over this one and I'm going to show you this trapezoidal prism. Now I'm not going to go through this with you, but I do want to remind you that no matter what, pr what prism you're being given, all you have to remember is what is the formula for each of the faces. If you can remember that, you literally can figure the surface area for any prism. In this case, for the trapezoid, if you remember the area of a trapezoid, A plus B divided by two multiplied by height. If you can remember that formula, then you can remember, yes, I know how to figure out the area of that trapezoid, and I know how to figure out the area of a rectangle, so I can combine all of that together, and then I can have the surface area of this trapezoidal prism. Okay, so don't forget that. Always remember your formulas. This is why I always say line one has to be formula. Now, before you go ahead and try this work, because I have this for you, if you need a rehash, you need to take a look at the video again, then please, by all means, and do that. If not, you can pause the video here, and there are two prisms here for you to work with. Just remember, line number one has to be the formula and review your work and make sure that you're getting each of the different faces. And look for some very specific things, like both of these dimensions, you're dealing with decimals. So be careful with those solutions. So good luck, and we'll see you in the next video. See you later.